I want to say thank you to all of the people who bought training. And I want to say thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And once again, shout out to the nerd crew and your well-constructed comments. Today, we're going to talk about the new face of black wealth. Let's kind of go back in time. The Cosby Show. That was a classy presentation of black success. A married man, a wife, and their children who were going to college. This was one of the game changers for black people, The Cosby Show. It showed that black folks could be successful, black people could hold professional jobs, and all black people were not ghetto. So this is the Cosby show was one of the most successful shows in the history of NBC, which showcased black people doing very well, black people addressing appropriately and black people seeking upward mobility. It was one of it was, you know, and this is one of the reasons that a lot of people really feel bad for Bill Cosby. Because, you know, I'm going to say it. I think Bill Cosby pissed off the wrong people because some of the charges he went to jail for happened 30, 40 years ago. And there is something called a statute of limitations. Unless you are a star and extremely successful, there is no statute of limitations for something you may have not even done. But that is the form of black wealth that i respect that i appreciate and if you've noticed i've kind of you know i've made some changes um i've kind of dialed down some stuff i've down 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 i dialed down the rhetoric and i've kind of gone back to showing receipts because because one of the reasons i'm showing you guys receipts is as part of my thesis that the things that I talk about, working hard, building a business, it works. And that's one of the reasons I show receipts. And for those of you who want more business content, and this is something that's going to happen. There's going to be more business content at B-School for Hustlers and more corporate content at, C at the corporate game. So look out for that. For those of you who want the business, the money, this channel is about Econ this channel is full of fuckery <laughs> it gets the most views go figure um but now there's this new face of black wealth that is a radical departure from the presentation that bill cosby and claire huxtable uh put out and the new face because um uh, i talked about it earlier about securing the bag I see it all over the place. Um, these people who like take the thing with Kanye. Kanye, I have a lot of people who hate the things that I've said about Kanye. I think Kanye is a complete and utter dumbass um, to lose one point five billion to attack a group of people who are not attacking him to say these things. I think he and, it, you know, I don't think Kanye has the presence of mind. The future will bear this out to start his own brand because see here's the thing and this this kind of is part and parcel to the new face of black wealth kanye west is uh worth hundreds of million dollars even after this he is part of the face of black wealth dr dre lil wayne re um cardi b uh master p the new face of black wealth is rooted in hip hop sports and this is one of the things i kind of appreciate about um some of the stuff i see is like rapper athlete and there's a line drawn through it an entrepreneur because i make nfl money and i don't carry a ball and the thing is, because I make money with my mind, I can continue to make money 
at an elderly age, whereas your NFL or NBA or Major League Baseball career, I think Major League Baseball players have the longest career success. I mean, I think they can be, I don't even know what the average age, but I wouldn't be surprised if the average uh, amount of season someone does in baseball is 10 or 12. I wouldn't be surprised at all because it's just as not as physical as basketball, definitely not as physical as the NFL. But one of the things that I am consistently seeing is let's talk about this messaging. Messaging is huge. And when you see Kanye, you see Lil Wayne, when you see Cardi B, uh, and this is something that's funny. I don't know if it's true or not, but Cardi B supposedly has all these cars, but Cardi B can't drive which is crazy so this is kind of the thing that i see with the new face of black wealth uh, i'm actually seeing it in the black business sector uh, i see people driving like like i said i'm not you know once again that's personal preference if you have the money you, you have the money you could buy a rolls royce that's your thing but for me that's just a huge ass car and one of the things I consistently see on the gram and TikTok are people flying private. And could I afford to fly private? Yeah. But from a cost allocation, that is completely stupid. So I'm going to spend $30,000 to fly a plane to Miami when I could fly first class round trip. That's $30,000 one way. So a $60,000 round trip. And I can spend fifteen hundred on a first class ticket. That makes no sense to me. Once again, if you have a business that requires you to be in two or three cities consistently, then having a private jet makes sense. You know, I'm not knocking that, but just to fly private to post pictures on Instagram, and this is the presentation of the new face of Black Wealth. We're flying private. When COVID started. Um, there was a, this notion that all these people were going to start flying private. Flying private jet is extremely expensive. It's extremely expensive. Literally, a round trip, a round trip on a private jet can cost you the same amount of money you would pay to buy a car. So every time you go somewhere and come back private, you you spent a money that would buy you and not a, not an econo box but a more moderate luxury car because it's going to cost you fifty sixty thousand dollars round trip and i'm consistently seeing the presentation and this is where the messaging gets warped because you're, you're seeing all of this you're seeing these people they're flying private they're living this life and once again i was watching and, you know, I'm not starting any YouTube booths, so I'm not starting any YouTube beefs. So I'm not mentioning any names. But what the hell is going on with the Mr. T starter chain? I literally will see people who are talking about business with this thick Cuban or the Mr. T starter chain with their name on it. Um. That's something I'm just not going to do. I don't see the need to have Glendon Cameron on. I, I just that to me, that just doesn't make any sense. But this is part of the presentation of black wealth. Bandman Calvo. He, he doesn't have one Mr. T starter chain. He has three. And from a practical sense of practical Standpoint, it makes no sense because uh, I had a guy I played football with in high school and he wore a chain during football games and something happened where his chain ended up cutting him because he got hit and the chain got in his skin. And he had this big old cut because he was wearing this chain. And I'm just sitting there like it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. But what you're seeing and once again kanye is legitimately wealthy master p is legitimately wealthy cardi b is legitimately wealthy waiting on tasha k to pay her her four million um 
these people have money. They have money. They have access. And what you're seeing is crass consumerism. Like, let me tell you how I live my life. Whenever I have a bunch of stuff in my space that I don't need, it messes with me. So um, one of the reasons moving out the house and moving in here was such a onerous chore was I had to get rid of a lot of stuff. And it got to the point where I just literally start giving stuff away because it didn't make sense to pay money to store something that I don't want. Because, you know, um, last I got a new bedroom set and the current the the old bedroom set I just gave to the people who delivered it because it would have cost me two to three hundred bucks to move that bedroom set out of here. And then I would have to spend 200 bucks to put it in the storage unit. Then I would have to spend time and effort trying to sell it on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. And once I just did some quick math, if I held on to that bedroom set three months, it's going to cost me 600 plus the cost, about a thousand bucks. And I wasn't going to get a thousand bucks if I sold it. So once again, this, this is what I'm talking about. You know, um, I heard that Jeff Bezos doesn't have a yacht. He rents yachts. I don't know if it's true or not. I haven't researched it. But there's a thing that, you know, having money is awesome. And being able to do what you want. And once again, personal preference is that's how you roll with your Mr. T starter chain. And that's part of who you are. And that's part of your stilo. And you've been doing it for 10, 15 years. Knock yourself out. But um, shout out to the real estate trapper because he gave me this. I actually found that video where Tony the Closer actually said that he bought the drip. He bought the drip so people would pay more attention to him. And what I interpreted from that is, let me, let me go ahead and say something to you. And let me explain something to you guys. Your audience is everything. And when I first came to YouTube and I was selling my storage auction product, 90% of my audience were white people. I didn't have the Mr. T starter chain. I didn't have, for the longest time, and you, you could go back because I, I, interesting enough, I was thinking about deleting the older videos today, but I'm, I'm going to leave them alone because no one watches them. There's, I mean, these videos are 12, 13 years old. Um, I actually hid my success and I had people buying my products and I hid my success and because I was selling to a different audience. You will see it all over the place. You will see white YouTube creators have the most basic content, but because once again, I feel the YouTube algorithm is racist because it recommends because I'm starting to see this across a whole bunch of black content creators that they're pushing their content to black people versus pushing their content to interest base because uh, I'm getting, you know, like I said, uh, I've been hitting those little three dots and it is starting to show me a different level of content. And I'm starting to get more white creators because at one point all it was feeding me was, you know, black folks. And I'm like, and the thing is, if that black content creator was creating content that I was interested in, fine. That's your YouTube algorithm is doing a good job. But it was recommending me all kinds of bullshit. And I'm just like, you recommending me this because I'm black? That's and that's one of the traps that I feel that a lot of black content creators get caught up in there. They make content that appeals to a wide range of people, but they push their content to black. <clears throat> and I'm going to say it. The biggest content on black YouTube is ghetto fied hip hop content. And, you know, there's one guy you see his commercials like, why aren't you the landlord? Why don't you own that commercial? Uh, he's part of the progressive black folks. And I can understand that my presentation, because one of the things that, like I said, this is one of the reasons that I am putting 
more content at B-School for Hustlers. And I'm going to start devoting more time and effort to the corporate game, more time and effort to B-School for Hustlers, because I have a different audience over there than I have over here. And, you know, um, one of the things that I see with the new face of black wealth is if you're not hood and this is some Tony to closure said it's like they didn't pay no attention to me until I started wearing this stuff and then I got the I think he says he has two Lambos and stuff like that um, I'm gone as far as I've gone um, the Porsche as far as I'm going I'm not gonna and I will tell you um, for me for me I at one point I had three cars and Two cars is kind of it because two cars you can drive pretty regularly and you don't need a, a trickle charger to keep your car battery from going dead. So I'm not going to go out and get a Lambo. You're never going to see me with a Mr. T starter chain. That's just not who I am as a person. And I refuse because once again, I do understand that if I was to start a TikTok channel, and once again, I think TikTok is completely stupid. Uh, I could do better. So the new phase of Glendon Cameron is I am focusing on delivering, like I said, B School for Hustlers. You will not see any of the content you see over here. You will not see any of the content at the corporate game. And ultimately, uh, my goal is, is to build those other two channels up. And frankly, from a money standpoint, if I got the views that I get here at B School for Hustlers, I would make four times the money for the same views because I have a higher CPM over there. So that's another reason that I am going to start really, really focusing on putting content over there. And because once again, there's for the most part, I just don't have as many fools over there as I do over here because my presentation of black wealth um, you have to work and the new face of black wealth is you can finesse wealth that's the message you can finesse you don't have to work hard you don't have to serve people you don't have to build nothing there's some way that you can finesse or hack wealth or get money and this is why all these people who put up this CPN content this age corporation content they do extremely well because there are people who feel that they can hack wealth, that they can somehow substantially generate income, wealth and money through some type of esoteric or secret Illuminati methodologies. And that's the presentation of the new black wealth. Uh, there's one guy who's kind of part of the investment segment of YouTube. His name is Aristotle's Invest. And I watched an interview where he actually told the truth. He was talking about he didn't make a lot of his money off investment. He made his money because he was selling a book. He was selling a product. And I was like, oh my, this is different. And well, another thing that you will see with um, the new face of wealth is it's extremely young. Now, are there legitimately wealthy young black people? Absolutely. Is it that many? No, it's not. It's actually quite rare. Once again, Google zip code 30327. It was funny. I was over there the other day doing something done and someone recognized me. It's like, why are you over here? You don't live over here no more. It, it, it was funny, but I have lived around real wealth. I've lived around women in my neighborhood who came outside to walk their dogs while wearing diamonds. So I have seen real wealth up close and personal and it ain't what I'm seeing in the black presentation of wealth because one of the things that you will have to happen is you gotta have the Mr. T starter chain. You gotta have a Lambo. You gotta have a Rolls Royce. You. It, Honestly, um, I'm getting a new SUV and I looked at the Urus and I don't really like it. I know that's going to sound strange, but I really looked at it. I test drove one. 
I'm gonna give me a Porsche Cyan Turbo. Just from visual preference, I like the Porsche product better than I like the Lambo products. And you know, the uh, Lambo, I looked at it and it's just like, once again, it's not something that I'm going to get because I don't like it. I'm not going to get a Lamborghini Urus to flex up on YouTube to impress people that, yeah, he got that Urus or he got that Wraith or he's got that Ghost or he's got that. Now, I, I, I did struggle with the G-Wagon. I do like the G-Wagon, but um, it was kind of between the G-Wagon and it was kind of between the Porsche and the Porsche one out. I'm just becoming more of a, a Porsche um, product fanboy because um, my current BMW right back there, that's probably going to be the last BMW to ever get because I'm not a fan of their new products. These huge, crazy looking grills, just not a fan. And once again, you will see people who will go out and buy stuff because it's popular. Like another thing, Omni and a Hellcat. That Hellcat has a cult like following and people go nuts. Like uh, I was listening to these guys have a conversation about renting a car on Turo. And the guy's like, yeah, I rented my car, my Hellcat on Turo for a month. And he came back and he said, the car looked okay, but I drove it. I noticed I was sliding. And then he got out and he looked and he saw the inside of his tires were slick because they were racing and doing burnouts in the car. And, you know, he was like, thank God they didn't wreck it. But what you will see, like there's this girl, SRT Bree. There is a cult following around Hellcats and there is a cult following around certain people. I forget Nipsey Hustle. There's kind of like a cult like following around him. And um, with this new presentation of black wealth, it's loud, it's gaudy. Mr. T started chain is a big part of it. And you've got people out here buying stuff that doesn't make any sense from an economic standpoint, like flying private. Um, if I was to start flying private, I would go broke so quick. I would go broke so quick because it, it's just, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to do this type of stuff. But this is part of the new presentation of the new face of black wealth that we lit. We're, we're taking these trips. We're flying private. We got the Mr. T starter chain and there is no dignity like A.G. Gaston would never been caught in public with a Mr. T starter chain. And A.G. Gaston, when he died, was worth over a hundred million dollars. And A.G. Gaston made money the majority of his life. A.G. Gaston was wealthy and Reginald Lewis was wealthy. And um, Chenault, who was the CEO of American Express, if you didn't know, black American Express had a black CEO for a long time. He is wealthy. He's part of that old presentation of black wealth. And once again, these people have money. There is no dispute in that they have money. But I'm going to be criticized for saying this. They have no class. That's the thing that is missing. Um, I think LeBron James, who is a presentation of the new black wealth. But LeBron James is a classy dude. So if you will notice, LeBron has a different presentation. Kobe had a different presentation. Um, Russell Wilson has a different, different presentation. But one of the things that you will see going on, and once again, I'm, I'm a big on messaging because once again, uh, you will see a new level of messaging coming from me next month. And I'm working on that today and messaging, you know, if you just grow up and every time you if you're a young person, if you're an impressionable person and every time you get on the gram 
or you get on TikTok or you get on YouTube and you see the Mr. T starter chain and you see someone in the Hellcat or this is something that's quite common on YouTube. Very young black couples who have success on YouTube buying mansions and I get it because you buy that mansion, that mansion can make you money. So from a business standpoint, that is wise. However, like, you know, I've already started looking for my next house. I mean, I just signed the lease. I'll be here the next November, but I've already started looking for my next house and it won't be a mansion. I'm going to tell you why it won't be a mansion. I'm a person that operates on practicality. It's just going to be me and my girlfriend living there, right? And she don't want to have no kids. So there are no kids in the future. And unless she changes her mind, but I don't think she will. And my next house is going to be probably three to 3,500 square feet at the largest, because that's pretty much all the space that I need, even though I could afford. There's a mansion across the street. Gorgeous place uh, sitting on maybe two acres has a long driveway has a pool. Beautiful house, beautiful house, but it's too much for me. It's just too much. It's just like 8,000 square feet. Um, you know, once again, for me personally, I want a more cozy setup. So I'm not going to be rolling around in a mansion. Just it's just ain't me. I, I, like probably what may happen is I may have to buy some land and build to build what I want that may have to happen that's one of the reasons I'm looking um, and I may have to buy something and then build something later on to get exactly what I want because I, I'm a fan of the modern architecture but with the new presentation of black wealth and you see it all over Instagram if you hitting if you popping you got to be driving the latest whip you got to be with the Mr. T starter chain, you got to hit the whatever the destinations are. I don't even know what the destinations are. I don't even know what the lit hip destinations. I don't know about the flex. I don't know what that is, but I feel that it's harmful because for the young, impressionable people, they feel that that's something they have to do. Because once again, I got a video up talking about you don't have to be a millionaire to have a good life. Um, I don't spend, I think my burn rate right now is less than 100K a year. 100K to live here, to drive what I drive, to eat out. That, that's all I spend. 100K a year. I'm not spent like, man, if I was spending a million a year to live, and there are some people who do, and that's their right, and they've got the money, and they can live like that. But I would say it's not for me. It's not for me. So, you know, um, my burn rate in the future may double and that's probably going to max out at that point. So we're talking about like 200K. So based upon my thesis that I put out to you, that if you get to $250,000 a year, you can live a great life. And what I'm seeing, especially with these Lamborghinis. Lamborghinis make several Lamborghini makes several different models and some of them are I think a million dollars and you ain't hidden you ain't lit you ain't unless you got that and what I feel what I feel and history would prove me if I'm wrong um, I feel that we're in a point where people are tired of seeing the facades I think people are to the point where they want to see something real, sustainable, something they actually can do, because um, I'm going to be honest with you. The vast majority of people will never be millionaires. It ain't happening. However, I feel that with the education that we have and the available things that we have, that you can make six figures and you get married and you have a wife, 250 I feel that it's within the purview of the average person with the right information, making the right decisions, making the right moves. I feel that's doable for the average person. But and then 
with that kind of income, you in time can become an asset based millionaire. But for the average person, and I, I think this is one of the reasons that this content does so well, is the average person is sitting down dreaming and thinking, what would it be like to have that? And I don't have to ask myself, what would it be like to have money? Because I already know. And this is a this is something, as they like to say, this is some sauce. Once you know you're no longer thirsty, once you drink, you're no longer thirsty. And I have drunk. I have I drink at the well. So it's easier for me to make these lifestyle decisions based on personal preference versus social pressure. I, I don't feel any social pressure. Like I said, you won't see me with the Mr. T starter chain. Like I was watching the guy who when he started, he didn't have the Mr. T starter chain. Now he's got it. And I'm like, what, what, what is up with this? It's like, I'm going to say it to sell to the black audience that appreciates the, the hip hop ghetto hood type presentation. It's if you don't do that, you can't sell to them. You can't sell to them because that's what they want to see. And from a business standpoint, if you're in business that wants to sell to those people, you got to do what they need to see. So I do get that. But I'm not in the business to sell into the hip hop because once again, this is why I'm getting ready to start putting more effort and attention on my other channels because I have a different audience over there. This is why I give out shout out to the nerd tribe because um, I'm not interested in selling to that crowd of people because the mentality of that group is so basic, so low vibrational that the majority of them will never have shit. So I'm not really interested in that group. And I know I may be cutting my nose off to spite my face because of the way the YouTube algorithm is set up because this is who it's pushing my content to. And if you notice, this is why my views have gone down because I am not doing the hip hop presentation. I refuse, I'm not gonna do it. So what I'm gonna do is get a little smarter and then start built up because once again, messaging is everything. The message that you put out is everything from the way, from the way you dress to where you speak, your thumbnail, it's everything. And um, yeah, I, I want to be part of the old face of black wealth, the Dr. Huxtable, Claire Huxtable presentation, the A.G. Gaston presentation, the Reginald Lewis presentation. That's the presentation that I plan to be a part of and to, partic to participate in and to do that. And speaking of that, let's roll this wonderful bean footage and let's go ahead and talk about the corporate game, the sponsor of this video. What's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron and I want to introduce you to the corporate game. What is the corporate game? The corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have? And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game, teaching you things about business, money, corporate structures, business credit, all of that, plus a lot more. Now, here is the deal. You can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training and the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head 
with information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's gonna take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. And what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year. At this level, you can get rich. You can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint. And that's what we give you in the corporate game what it is and how to play. So if you wanna sign up, if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years, go ahead, sign up for the corporate game. The link is in the first comment.